All right, I wanted to put a spotlight on Philip K. Dick today. Philip K. Dick, the science fiction author, probably my favorite science fiction writer. Um, but, you know, Frank Herbert's given him a run for his money. I think maybe Frank has tied him. But uh, Philip K. Dick has, he's probably most well known for Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? which was turned into the Ridley Scott film Blade Runner, even though that movie and the book are way different. But uh, I wanted to talk today specifically about We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, which appears in this short story collection. As you can see, this collection here includes the films, or the, the short stories that were adapted into Total Recall, Screamers, Minority Report, Paycheck, and Next. These are all films that are based on Philip K. Dick's works. So, we can remember for you wholesale. This was turned into Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Paul Vanderhoeven film. And it's very similar. Okay, so here's the story. The story itself is only 20 pages long. And his name is not Dennis Quaid in the short story. It's Dennis Qu or Douglas um, Douglas Quayle. Was it Doug Douglas Quaid? I think it was Douglas Quaid in the movie. Douglas Quaid. So in the book, it's Douglas Quayle. Uh, he's a salaried employee. So one of the differences is that um, he's a salaried employee that works for. What's, what's the exact quote here? A miserable little salaried employee works as like a clerk at a uh, for the government but uh, in the movie he was like a construction worker a muscle-bound construction worker running a jackhammer but his wife here Kirsten okay so one of the themes in this book is the mundane existence in life this is one of the things that uh, you'll see a lot of times in K, uh, Philip K Dick's work is it's the common man, you know, a member of what you would call, you know, just a, a middle class person. And that's what this guy is. And he's, he wants to go to Mars, right? So just like the film, he wants to go to Mars. So he goes to this, he gets into it with his wife and she's all like, why don't you just forget about Mars? You can't go there because you can't afford it. So he goes to recal or recall. R-E-K-A-L, Recall Incorporated, and he meets this guy there named Mr. McLean, and they have this strange conversation, uh, which is the stuff that I love in um, Dick's work. So he says, sit down, Douglas, McLean said, waving his plump hand towards a chair which faced the desk. So you want to have gone to Mars. Very good. Quail seated himself, feeling tense. I'm not sure this is worth the fee, he said. It cost a lot, and as far as I can see, I really get nothing. Cost almost as much as going, he thought. You get tangible proof of your trip, McLean disagreed emphatically. All the proof you'll need. Here, I'll show you. He dug within a drawer of his impressive desk. Ticket stub. Reaching into a manila folder, he produced a small square of embossed cardboard. It proves you went. And return. Postcards. He laid out four franked picture 3D full color postcards and a neatly arranged row on the desk for Quail to see. Film. Shots you took of local sites on Mars with a rented moving camera. To Quail, he displayed those two. Plus the names of people you met, 200 postcards worth of souvenirs which will, which will arrive from Mars within the following month. Passport, certificates, listing the shots you received, and more. He glanced up keenly at Quail. You'll know you went all right, he said. You won't remember us, won't remember me or ever having been here. It'll be a real trip in your mind. We guarantee that. A full two weeks of recall, every last piddling detail. Remember this, if at any time you doubt that you really took an extensive trip to Mars, you can return here and get a full refund, you see. So, <laughs> it's great. Uh, but I didn't go, Quail said. I won't have gone no matter what proofs you provide with me. 
He took a deep, unsteady breath, and I never was a secret agent with Interplan. It seemed impossible to him that Recall Incorporated's extra factual memory implant would do its job, despite what he heard people say. So, yeah, it's this whole thing about the nature of memory. And Dick, this is where Dick, this is why Dick is so, um, such a great read. It's the concepts and ideas that he brings to the table. And, you know, his endings, I'm going to just put straight up. You don't read Philip K. Dick for the endings. He often doesn't have the greatest endings to his short stories or his works. But the ideas that he has, uh, they're incredible. So, yeah, this story recalls. So, anyways, what happens next, I'm going to summarize, is he has a problem. Just like in the film, uh, they realize that he's actually been to Mars and that going through the recall implantation is actually triggering his pre-existing memories. And not only that, but the, the uh, spy program that he wanted to have installed where he could be on Mars as a spy, right, is that he actually was a spy. And this triggers the police to show up the uh this uh, they're not like actual police though they're this is like very corporatism in the future so it's like some sort of corporate hell that everybody is living in where where it, and this is common in philip k dick's writing too is these uh big brother all seen government entities but they're they're really run by corporations and it's no different in this story either but anyways these these police these company police they show up because he has an implant like in his head but not only like in the total recall movie okay where it can track you they can actually like hear his thoughts so his mind has been uh like they know what he's thinking like they they can literally like read his mind with this device that's implanted so he's really in, like no place he can run or escape even though he does get in a robot cab just like in the movie uh and tries to flee from them but uh you know they catch him and they're gonna kill him and then he bargains with them like you know what if I go back to recall? Give me a second chance and we'll mind wipe me and you can put a different thing in there. Uh, something better than this that'll make me forget that I want to go to Mars and I want to uh, be an agent. And so what they do is they have this psychiatric evaluation type thing where they say, well, here's what we'll do. We will make you think that you were visited by aliens when you were uh, a youngster, I think he's 10 years old, six, 10 years old, something like that. And uh, the aliens told you that, you know, they were going to destroy the planet, but because you were so cool, they're not going to do it. And they, they're going to implant this into his mind that He's going to believe that as long as he's alive, his very existence keeps the earth from being destroyed by aliens. And that that's so grandiose and big that it'll just make his life, his mundane existence matter. It'll make it mean something, right? Now, I won't give you the very end of the story because they put him back in and then, you know, it's got a wacky ending. Very pulpy. But... The ideas in this story about having a telepathic transmitter inside of your head that's broadcasting your your thoughts to an agency, the whole thing with the nature of mind, of your, your thinking and everything, it's a very good short story. Uh, I think it's a great short story, you know, and I would give it a four out of five as a short story. Um, one other thing I want to say about reading short stories, it's always good to have a collection of short stories sitting around because sometimes when you're reading massive books, you know, six, seven hundred page novels, 
you can hit a block where you're just like, oh, I, I don't want to DNF, you know, do not finish this book. So you have to find a short story to read, to kind of like palate cleanse to, to wipe your palate clean, your mental palate clean, so that you can go back in and re-engage with the massive tome that you're reading. So the Philip K. Dick Reader, uh, this is great. It's a good introduction to Philip K. Dick if you've never read his stuff before. Um, it's got a lot of his short stories from the 1950s. We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, I think, was written in 1966, around the same time that he was writing Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. So I will probably do a few more reviews for these uh, short stories. Here's the ISBN on this book. You want to read it? Philip K. Dick, great author. What can I say? One of my favorite science fiction writers, if not my favorite science fiction writers. He tends to be more cynical and, you know, I mean, I agree with, with uh, Philip K. Dick, right? Like, I'm not really a fan of, of Heinlein. Um, maybe I'll do a Heinlein review here, you know, but uh, <laughs> Heinlein tends to write about the Superman, whereas Philip K. Dick tends to write about the common man getting crushed by big brother. All right. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.